influential climate scientists on the planet. Michael Mann, his latest book is Our Fragile Moment, How Lessons from the Earth's Past Can Help Us Survive the Climate Crisis. Uh, congratulations on the book, Michael. Uh, despite this year being on track to be the hottest ever recorded, you take, as Bill just did, a cautiously optimistic tone in your book. You write, quote, the greatest threat is no longer denialism, which is frankly untenable given the impacts that we can all see playing out in real time, but rather doomism, the notion that it's too late to act, unquote. So what lessons from the past give you hope that we can actually meet this moment? Yeah, thanks. And it, it was a great uh, sort of summary that Bill provided there. And he, he emphasized sort of this duality of urgency and agency. The urgency is obvious. It's clear. We're all feeling increasingly dire consequences of fossil fuel burning and the warming planet that that's causing. But as Bill alluded to, um, we have agency as well. We can reduce our carbon emissions enough to avoid crossing into truly catastrophic territory. And when we look to the past, we can see that you know, Earth does have a certain amount of resilience. The Earth system, Earth climate has a certain amount of resilience within it. And, and that's a helpful thing. And we see that in the past. The climate hasn't spun out of control. It's warmed up substantially when there's been a massive input of carbon dioxide. And that happened 55 million years ago, for example. That was a natural input of carbon dioxide. The planet warmed nearly nine degrees Fahrenheit, uh, but it took tens of thousands of years. That's rapid on a geological time frame. We're warming the planet a hundred times faster. And that's really the problem. It isn't how warm it is or how high CO2 levels are. They've been higher. The planet's been warmer. It's the rate at which we are warming the planet, but we can stop it. If we stop polluting the atmosphere with carbon pollution, the warming of the planet stops and the impacts that we're seeing stop getting worse. We'll still have to contend with those impacts that are baked in, but we can prevent it from getting worse. And I think in this message that you and Bill are, are conveying today is so important because there's so many young people out there who, who have this apocalyptic view. Uh, and it's so it's such a it's such a pessimistic view um, and it can really cause almost a nihilism. And it's really important to convey to them. No, no, no. We we can make a difference. We can get a hold of this. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And, and again, you know, when we look to the past, uh, what we find is that those you know, extinction events in the past were caused not by runaway warming. There's some people today who think that we've triggered runaway warming, uh, a release of methane that we can't stop and all life will be extinct in 10 years no matter what we do. That's not true, that's not happening. And it isn't what happened in these past events. What happened in these past events was that there was carbon dioxide in the past produced by volcanic outgassing, intense periods of volcanism. We are putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere today through fossil fuel burning. And if we stop fossil fuel burning, we stop that which threatens us, that which does threaten us and other living things with dire consequences yeah. if we don't rein it in. And this is a point I really want to get to before, before I have to say goodbye, which is you say that one of the biggest obstacles to action is the sustained disinformation campaign from the fossil fuel lobby, but also you write, quote, equally culpable are its abettors in the conservative media and none are more implicated than Rupert Murdoch. Um, quickly, do you see any evidence that the campaign to discredit climate science is lessening at all? You know, it, it's not lessening. What we're seeing is a shift um, away from outright denial. We see less denial because we're all seeing the impacts. We're all seeing the consequences. It's very difficult for polluters and, and those promoting their agenda to deny it's happening. So they've turned to other tactics, delay, deflection. And one of them, ironically, is doom mongering. If they can convince us it's too late to do anything about the problem, it potentially leads us down that same path of disengagement. So it once again comes down to urgency. We see the urgency. We have a crisis on our hands and agency. We can do something about this. We need action. We need to vote for politicians who will support climate action rather than politicians who will act as rubber stamps for polluters. The book again is Our Fragile Moment. The author is Michael Mann. Good to see you, sir. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Jake.